This morning, we want to continue our walk through the book of Acts. And I was telling Amy last night, I'm excited about, we're kind of at a transition point uh, for a few weeks. I feel like up until this point in Acts, it's been a little bit doom and gloom. Uh, Everything's been talking about the persecution of uh, different believers and what they went through and that we need to be going through all of that this morning or, or in our lives as well. And this morning we're going to transition a bit uh, and kind of talk about a little bit happier thought. Uh, maybe not happy, happy as we're talking about suffering, uh, but instead of, uh, you like that happy, happy? I, I saw your laugh in there. Uh, that might be a song. Anyway, um, we're going to kind of talk about how the Lord can use our suffering for His glory. And we're going to see a couple of instances in the book of Acts where that happens. Uh, and so if you have your Bibles with you this morning, and I hope you do, uh, I would ask you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 9, and we'll be continuing in verse 31 in just a few moments. During the pandemic time uh, that we've been shut down or right before it happened, uh, we, I have heard and maybe even said some things like this, things that will never happen. The government will never shut down churches in the United States. We'll never have to wear masks everywhere we go. We'll never have businesses shut down. And the list continues on and on and on about the things that we say may not ever happen to us. Uh, Going broader than just during the pandemic time, I remember when I took my first position on staff at a church, I was a student pastor. And I told my pastor that day, I said, Brother Gary, I will never preach in big church. I'll never be the guy who stands up and he says, well good, I have vacation coming up in three weeks and I need you to preach for me. Uh, And so quickly he changed my thoughts on what I could and what I would or wouldn't do. And he used me to, or he let the Lord use me in a way that I thought he never would. As we read through the Gospels and through the book of Acts, we find Jesus and the apostles healing people, casting out evil spirits, and so forth and so on, doing the the acts of God. We often act as if this is not possible in our time. How many have ever heard somebody say, God doesn't heal anybody today. He don't do that. We don't cast out demons in today's society. We don't do those things that we saw happen in the Bible. Here's the problem with that thought process. I believe that we limit God when we say things like that. Now, the the reason I think that we feel that way is because the way that that's being presented in today's society. uh, I'll take, for instance, a guy who you walk up and he puts your hand on his head and you pass out in the floor. I don't necessarily think that's the way it works. Uh, But God is still in the healing business. God is still in the casting out spirits business. God can still do what God did in the book of Acts. If we'll trust in Him and if we'll let Him work. And so oftentimes we think about those things in the Bible as things that we'll never see happen. Or as things that don't ever happen anymore. And Like I said earlier, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, we're going to pick up in the book of Acts, chapter 9. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 31. And this is what God's Word says. So church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. Now as Peter went here and there among them... He came down also to the saints who lived in Lydda. There he found a man named Unaeus, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all of the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Verse 36, Now there was in Joppa... A disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. 
And since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. And the widow stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her hand, he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all of Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for the power of healing. God, we thank you for the power of resurrection. God, we thank you for suffering. God, it's not easy to accept suffering. God, it's not easy to go through life circumstances. But God, teach us today through your word. God, that the suffering that we go through, if we'll allow it, God, can be used for your glory. Just like it was with Aeneas, just like it was with Tabitha, God, and many others. Lord, help us to be your faithful servants, God. We love you and we praise you, and it's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray today. Amen. I want you to notice in verse 31, we see something that hasn't happened up until this point in the book of Acts, it says, So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. If you recall, up until this point, it has been struggle after struggle, persecution after persecution, trial after trial. And finally, we see that the church has peace. Things began to improve for the Christians This morning we're going to look at the healing and we're going to look at a resurrection. And as we look at the healing of Aeneas and the resurrection of Tabitha, I want us to think about suffering. Yes, a man was miraculously healed and Peter was one of five people in the Bible to resurrect someone from the dead. The others were Elijah, Elisha, Jesus, Paul, and then Peter. But our passage also shows us the value of suffering. Sometimes we get so caught up in our suffering that we forget about the value that God can bring from our suffering. Suffering is a tool that can be used for the gospel. Suffering is a way that the gospel of Jesus is made known. And suffering is how the gospel is lived out in our lives. We are experiencing, in my opinion... More persecution than we've ever experienced in America. But, church, we're still able to meet in this room. We don't know persecution the way that some places do. We don't know suffering the way that some places do. But, church, we need to give glory to God for our suffering. We've seen about many believers up until this point. Peter, John, Stephen, and Paul... And at this point, we see Paul is going to go off of the scene for a little while. We've seen their struggles. We've seen their trials. We've even seen the transformation of the life of Saul into Paul and his Damascus Road experience. But let us not forget about all of the preparations that were made in the first nine and a half chapters of the book of Acts so that the mission of the church could be accomplished so that God's work could be done. Verse 31 is basically the summation of all of that work. Despite the opposition of the church that they had experienced up until this point, it finally received peace. It received good news. And the next word was it began to multiply. We saw through some of the persecution that the church multiplied. But now the church as a whole is beginning to multiply. And it's beginning to add new and new, new believers every day. Now in the balance of the time that we have left this morning, I want us to kind of 
Think about that suffering. Think about what that peace that they're having. But I also want us to look at some lessons that we can learn through our suffering. Some strategies, some things that we can learn during our suffering. And we'll see in the last 12 verses of this passage of Scripture that we read this morning, a man who was healed. He had been an invalid for eight years. And then the resurrection of a woman who had died, who had been the caregiver to many widows. And then she passed away. And then she was resurrected. And so this morning, I want us to notice three lessons in suffering. Suffering lesson number one. God is sovereign over our suffering. God is sovereign over our suffering. That's a hard statement to accept. It's hard to think that God, who is all-knowing, who is all-powerful, who is all-omniscient, who knows everything, is everywhere, is sovereign over our suffering. And He allows us to go through it. But church, God is in control. You see this man, uh, Aeneas, who had been stuck in the bed for eight years. We ask the question, why did God wait eight years to heal this man? Why did God let it go on so long? And I would venture to say that it's because God is sovereign. God knows all and is in control of all. God used Peter to heal Aeneas in the power of Jesus Christ. If it would have happened at any other time, it would not have fit the context of the story and it would not have had the impact that it had. Church, I often ask the question, Kind of like this. My mom wasn't physically healed. She was eternally healed from her disease. But I often ask God, why did it last so long? Why did the suffering happen so long? And I'm quickly reminded back to the number of lives who were touched by the positivity of my mom. By the fact that when you walked in her room without her being able to do anything for herself... And you ask her how she was. She was good because God gave her another day to breathe. And church, God used that. And in the same way he used her suffering, in the same way he used Aeneas' suffering for eight years as he was an invalid, paralyzed in the bed, God wants to use our suffering for his good too. Many of us are suffering from some of the things that we're talking about, the things that we thought would never happen to us. Many of us have those thoughts in our our mind, and our brain that we're thinking about right now. Things that we imagined would never happen. I never thought that I would get to a place where I couldn't walk sufficiently. I never thought that I would get to a place where I might not remember everything the way that I always had before. I might not be, I, I, I might have said that I'll never have a child who acted that way. Why are y'all laughing? I never said that about my children. Okay, maybe I did. But we all have those things in our life where we say that will never happen to me. And now we're living it. And we're asking God why. But church, if we will let God work in us and we will let God move, He wants to use that suffering for His glory. God is not surprised by the timing of anything that we're going through. God's not surprised by the virus that we're going through. He's not surprised by the social unrest that we're experiencing. He's not surprised by the racial unrest that we're experiencing in our culture. But what He's waiting on is for the church to step up and to be the people that He's called us to be And to let those experiences in our life be used for His glory. So that we can say, man, I had this issue with the virus. Man, I had this issue in my social life. I had this problem with racial reconciliation. But God has used me and He used my story to provide healing among the nations. In the same way that He did with Aeneas. God may use you just as He used Peter. 
Peter was traveling all around preaching the gospel. It wasn't an accident that Peter met this paralyzed man in Lydda. It's also not an accident that God used him to heal someone. Whether that be physically, emotionally, or spiritually, God may use you to heal someone as well. And you're like, well, I'll never walk into a room and pray over somebody that is sick and they'll get up and walk out of the bed. Number one, I would say, how do you know that? You're limiting the power of God. But you may be right. It may not be that kind of healing. Maybe it's something that you've dealt with in your past and you said, I've moved past this. God used this in my life, this moment in my life to teach me. And now I'm helping other people grow beyond this. Church, don't limit God in what He can do. He can use us in so many different ways if we'll just allow Him to. So number one lesson is God is sovereign over us. Suffering lesson number two. Christians should endure suffering for the sake of Christ. That's a hard one to say too. Why do you say I should endure suffering for the sake of Christ? I'm doing what God's called me to do. I shouldn't have to suffer. God should just give me an easy road. Church, God never promises an easy road. Miracles have a divine purpose. It's not just some random thing that happened. Aeneas was healed in order to draw people to Jesus Christ. If you remember what it said, it said that he was healed. And all of the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and they turned to the Lord. People came to know the Lord because of the healing power that happened that day. His being able to get up out of the bed and walk was a byproduct. It wasn't about Unias being able to get up out of the bed and walk. That was the product that God used to save the people of Lydda. And of Sharon. And so it may not be that God is going to use the suffering that we go through to heal us, but instead it may just be a byproduct of what He wants to do. As we go through suffering, we also need to remember the real purpose of our healing, of our victory. And when we have victory, the purpose is to draw people to Jesus. I know, have no doubt in my mind when I think about my mom that the suffering that she went through was for a reason. The suffering that she went through brought people to a closer relationship with Jesus because as they looked upon her, they could see that here was a woman who had nothing basically. She couldn't even feed herself in her last days. But she was good because God gave her another day to live. And church, if that doesn't move us, if that doesn't allow God to stir something in us, then we need to check where we are. When we have victory, it's not about our victory. It's about the purpose that Jesus is using that to draw people to Him. Your healing or your victory over something is the byproduct of what God wants to do. So suffering lesson number one, God is sovereign over us. Suffering lesson number two, Christians should endure suffering for the sake of Jesus Christ. Suffering lesson number three, we must bear the burden of suffering. We must bear the burden of suffering. Here we see this lady, Tabitha. She had been serving others her entire life. She was always doing good. She was helping the poor. The widows were there when she died and most likely had been there since they found out that she was sick. Those ladies that she had served came to serve her. They came to do for her what she did for them. There was clothing that Tabitha had made. Tabitha had ministered to the widows and to the poor. She had been bearing the burden for those who were suffering. And once she became sick and was stuck in her home, the widows that she had helped came to take care of her. These widows were bearing Tabitha's burden of suffering. Church, there's going to come a time when we suffer. Maybe it's not today. 
But we are to carry the burden of suffering for our brothers and sisters who are so that one day they will come and carry the burden for us because we're going to need the same help as well. Church, we must bear the burden of our suffering. These ladies sent for Peter. They said, Peter, come. Tabitha's sick. They had heard what had happened in Lydda and Sharon with Unias. And they went and they got him and Peter rose and he came. And it said immediately he came in and he asked the ladies to walk out and they walked outside and he knelt and he prayed and he turned to her body and he said, Tabitha, arise. And immediately she opened her eyes. Because, I believe that because Tabitha was willing to bear the burden of others, Jesus saw fit to heal her. So that she could continue carrying the burden of others. Because he wanted to use her as a saint of his. And what happened when she arose? The same thing that happened when Unias rose. It said he, she raised up and then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. People knew what she had done. People knew how she had carried the burden for others, how she had helped the poor and helped the widows the way that God had called her to. And then they saw the God that she served heal her. And they turned to him because they knew that what they heard must be true. So church, as we close today, I want to ask you, are we letting our suffering be used for the glory of God? When we think about God being sovereign of all and, and God bearing our burden and, and, and we have to endure suffering for the sake of Jesus Christ, are we willing to do those things for, the, for what happens? Not so that we get healing. That's the byproduct. But so that eternally people come to know Jesus. Can God use us to physically heal someone or to raise someone from the dead? Most of us may say, no, he's not going to do that for me. Church, he can. He can use us. He can use me. He can use you to do whatever he wants to. Because remember, God is sovereign. And there is nothing that is impossible for him. What is more important than people being physically healed or raised from the dead is that they are spiritually resurrected and spiritually healed and so while it may not be a physical healing the life that we live especially when we're in the midst of suffering the example that we set may help someone to know Jesus would you pray with me this morning God I thank you so much for today and I thank you for your word God I thank you for Peter's willingness to go and to be used God even when he probably said, that will never happen. Just like Ananias last week. When he was told to go and share with Saul. He was like, why in the world is that happening to me? This guy's coming to persecute people like me. Why is God sending me to him? And I know that all of us have those things in our life that we say, that will never happen to me. One day, we're going to experience suffering. And we need to remember in that suffering that Jesus is sovereign. He knows He has a purpose for what's happening. We need to be willing, we need to be willing to endure the suffering that He gives us. For the cause of Jesus. And we must bear that suffering for Him. And so while we sit here and we think, why in the world am I going through all of this stuff? I pray that this morning God will 
reach out and show us that the reason we're going through it may be so that we can help others come to know Him. It may, again, not be a physical healing like we saw happen with Aeneas or a physical resurrection like we saw happen with Tabitha. But God can use our spirit and our attitude for His glory to help others come to know Him. Lord, let it not be about us, but about You. So this morning, if you're here and you've experienced the healing, the spiritual healing that we've talked about today, I pray that you consider this morning the sovereignty of God, that He is Lord of all. I pray that you consider that this suffering that we go through may be for His glory. And it's in His timing, not ours. Maybe you're here this morning and you say you've never experienced spiritual healing. Today could be the day for you to experience God in a way that you never have before. I'll be here at the altar if you need to talk. This altar will be open if you need to pray. As I say every week, I pray that you not walk out of these doors the same way that you walked in this morning. I pray that God would do a mighty work here today. God, if there's one here today who needs you, I pray that today would be their day. Lord, help us to recognize our suffering as a byproduct of what you want to do for your kingdom. Speak to us today, God. It's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray.